I call to order the Lynchburg Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, February 27th, 2019. The first order of business is the approval of the January 23rd and February 13 minutes. Are there any additions, changes, any corrections need to be made? I think over? probably, I mean, I'd like to have them voted on separately because I wasn't at the 13th of February meeting. Okay. All right. So we'll vote on, on then January 23rd. Anybody have a motion? Make a motion to approve. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And all right. I have to abstain because I was absent. Uh, from that one. All right. All right. So let's go to the February 13. I mean, February 27, I'm sorry. No. Minutes? No. February 13. Is it February 13? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I can't read. February 13 minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I had to abstain on that one because I was not here. And I'm abstained because I wasn't here either. Okay. The next order of business is continuation of a discussion regarding short-term rentals. This is not a public hearing. So the commission can, at its discretion, allow citizens to speak according to our posted rules. Uh, but we're going to mainly continue on the conversation that we started actually a month ago and has carried on two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, we looked at a proposal piece by piece, and we made some amendments, but then we never voted on it. So this is a meeting where we could vote on that, but um, I, since we had a couple people who were not here, I thought we might open it up to discussion here on the commission. Well, you know, let me say, I'm always hesitant when I have not been to a meeting to come back in and I don't need to say the word second guess, but to make any comments at a, at a subsequent meeting when I haven't had the benefit of the discussion at the previous meeting. But, and so to that extent, I apologize to the other commissioners that I was not here and didn't have the benefit of the discussion. But I will say there are several issues in the proposal that, as I understand, came out of the February 13th meeting that I have some serious reservations about, and to the extent that, that I wouldn't vote in favor of the proposal that I saw that came out of that meeting. I would not feel comfortable at this point voting in favor of some of those provisions. Could you elaborate on which provisions? Well, uh, there's some, some problems with the longevity involved. There's some issues in my mind with the uh, issues of, of R1 and R2 being in the same categories as some of the business categories. Uh, that sort of they're not well that's that's my understanding and that may be why I'm you know I didn't get the benefit of all of the discussion at the at the previous meeting but uh, as I said I just I just don't feel comfortable at this point for my vote being in favor of what we've got drafted and with that said I know you all spent over two hours at the previous meeting so I'm, I'm sure there are some discussion points that I have missed that I would benefit from, but uh, I would like to see the, uh, I'd like to see some additional work and perhaps consensus building be done on the proposal. I think that from the previous meeting that we had, my sense was that there was a good possibility that there could have been a consensus among the, the staff and the planning commission and the citizens involved uh, that would lend itself to us having a, a more refined document to send to City Council. And I get very few comments from City Council members, but I have had several City Council members reach out to me since the last meeting uh, and express some concerns about what they have seen so far. And I know some of you all have had similar conversations, it's just not me, uh, and have asked us to try to get as refined as a product as you as we could so that we just don't come to City Council with a, a lot of unresolved issues. And, and that is part of our function, is to try to get some of these things worked out in a better fashion than just coming up to City Council and saying, well, we weren't able to get these things resolved to our satisfaction, here's the mess for you. So uh, one, I can't vote in favor of what we've got. 
above and beyond that, I would like to see a another work session with a uh, opportunity for public comment to to proceed forth. And I would make a motion to that effect. Okay. So any way on Are that? you making a motion? Making yes. A motion for yes. That. A second. All right. Well, then I, I guess we'll vote on that. Or should we discuss it more? Well, I think if we have two motions. There's, we, no, there's only one. I mean, uh, a second motion. motion. Second. You you can you move forward with a vote, or you do, do we you discuss? Can discuss it. I think we it's, can yeah, discuss. I think okay. Discuss. okay. All right. So to be clear, we have only public hearing. Yes. Okay. And that could not occur until March 27th. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to give the reasons why I second it. I, I think since. So I was at the last meeting, Chan, and and, um, and we did discuss it a, a great deal. There was one issue that I strongly disagreed with and could not agree with the others, and that was the owner occupancy in R1 and R2. And but the the other thing that that I'm wavering on is is the 120 days that that we had discussed at the time. And I think when it came up and when it was kind of portrayed to us it was it was said that it was actually in the Virginia Assembly at that time and they were voting on it they were voting on a bill that was going to make this you know time limit and so in my mind it was a statewide you know um, bill that they were they were getting ready to vote on and so we were like well I guess if that's going to be the mandate for the state we might as well put in you know put in a, a time frame so we were kind of picking a number out of the wind, I felt, but that's why I I did it. That's I mean, I think remember we discussed like if you rented out Airbnbs every weekend for the whole year, it would definitely be with it would definitely be less than that 120 days. Um, so the, I mean, that was kind of how we came up with that. We were talking about coming up with the date. Well, since even since then, I've had multiple phone calls and multiple emails that you guys have gotten as well tell you know telling us that there's so many business people out there that own the Airbnbs that have to rent it above that 120 days or they're they're going to either not be you know they're not going to be able to afford to keep doing it or they're going to have to get another job or and if it, and if it's not necessarily going to be a state mandated thing now I'm back to the drawing board on that 120 day Time frame. So, that being said, those two issues I'm, I'm still not in agreement with, and I I feel that the public, I don't think that Airbnb owners necessarily knew what we were doing. It's not like you put up a sign in a subdivision or in front of a property, and everybody has, you know, everybody gets notice that that we're going to be doing this. I mean, I think it was in the paper and, you know, who who actually reads the classifieds these days. So so I feel that there's some momentum with people finding out and and Facebook, you know, postings and and people calling people and and so I don't feel like there was a there was necessarily a fair playing field when we initially started this discussion and that the public the, everybody had a chance to to come in and discuss and give their two cents and that kind of stuff. So that is why I feel compelled to second Chan's motion. Um, could I get some clarification on that? Uh, I, my understanding of the pending legislation at the General Assembly was that if they passed something, it would it would nullify a limit. So if Fairfax had a limit of 90 days or 180 days or whatever they had, the state, the state law would trump it and the state law might be you cannot have a limit or was the state law going to put a limit? Uh, Mr. White could probably address this more appropriately, but my understanding was is that uh, Fairfax had a limit on the number of days and the law, as it was written, was only going to apply to Fairfax, and I believe it was 150 <coughs> days, 180 days. Um, so the law wasn't that you had to limit it. It was just that they were saying in Fairfax, if you were going to limit it, 
you weren't going to be able to limit it to any more than, than this. So um, if I could just, I know you have a motion on the floor. My, my advice to you would be to let me go through the short PowerPoint that I have so that you understand exactly where you are in terms of the ordinance and then discuss your options. Because you have several options on what you can and can't do at this point. So it's entirely up to you. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. No. Okay, so let's just do the background. Uh, we, we've heard this several times, but the zoning ordinance does not currently define short-term rental. Uh, the zoning administrator has interpreted that they are permitted by right in business districts and in owner-occupied residential district properties subject to our normal occupancy standards. Uh, we know that there are approximately 365 short-term rentals identified within the city and that these have increased uh, somewhat between 2016 and 2017 by 37%. October 23rd of last year, council directed staff to prepare amendments to allow short-term rentals in the city. Uh, on January 23rd, the Planning Commission had a public hearing. Uh, they heard from people that were uh, pro uh, short-term rentals and some people that were uh, against them. So, you know, your comments about um, uh, people wanting to have more input that's not just on the people that are pro Airbnb and short-term rental you can most definitely hear from people on the other side of it because there are two sides to this issue uh, February 13th you conducted a fairly in in detail work session and developed consensus on amendments to the draft ordinance and as Commissioner Rogers pointed out although you developed consensus the Commission did not take any formal action on recommending this uh, to uh, council so what did you do we went through this uh, point by point the first question that I asked you is should short-term rentals uh, be permitted within the city of Lynchburg uh, those members present uh, it was pretty unanimous yes that short-term rentals should be permitted uh, the next discussion was looking at the definition the accessory um, basically limiting it to a period of fewer than 30 days the commission at that point the five members that were present uh, directed that language be added indicating short-term rentals could be operated no more than 120 days per calendar year so this would be added to the definition and it's in the definition of the current draft now it is important to point out to the commission that this is the only item from the draft ordinance that staff sent to you that you made more stringent the rest of the items you uh, made more lenient okay so this is the only item that was more stringent than what was originally proposed uh, we talked about the different districts that they could be permitted in uh, the RC all the way up to the institutional district there was no change in the recommendation from the Commission that they be allowed in these districts uh, currently the zoning ordinance requires owner occupancy uh, to have an accessory unit uh, the Planning Commission directed that the R3 district be removed from the owner occupancy requirement. The Planning Commission directed that the requirement for the owner to be present be removed. So what the discussion was is that it needed to be the owner's primary residence, but they did not have to be there while it was being used as a short-term rental. Is that clear? Everybody's following? <coughs> All right. So the zoning ordinance... Uh, that's correct uh, zoning ordinance requires that structures with accessory units uh, in the RC R1 and R2 district maintain the appearance of a single household dwelling the draft short-term uh, ordinance included the R3 district in this. <coughs> uh, the Planning Commission directed that the R3 district be removed from the requirement for maintaining the appearance of a single household residence go back um, the Planning Commission also directed that the R3 district be removed from the owner occupancy requirement I'm not sure if I pointed that out but um, so now the owner occupancy requirement is only in the RC R1 and R2 district not the R3 so you removed R3 from it <coughs> zoning ordinance defines related people uh, the way it is across the entire city right now is no more than three unrelated individuals may occupy a dwelling unit. 
what the commission said they direct a staff that if it was being used for a short-term rental that it could not exceed four unrelated individuals and this was due to the discussion of a couple of two couples wanting to come to lynchburg and rent uh, they could do that four unrelated individuals would allow that if it was a family doing the short-term rental they would still be able to do that because they were related the planning commission also clarified and directed that the number of dwelling units shall not exceed the underlying zoning district what that means is if you're in an owner occupied house right you can rent out your basement it doesn't mean that you can also rent out another room for short-term rental basically having three different types of rentals in, in the unit so clarified that it was uh, the number of rental units could or units could not exceed underlying zoning district <clears throat> talked about uh, requiring one parking space per dwelling unit an accessory dwelling would require an additional parking space uh, should additional parking spaces be required uh, there was no change now in fairness uh, uh, you may want to discuss the B4 urban commercial district at, at, if, if you choose to because now there's no parking requirements for B4 um, so you might want to talk about that uh, we talked about the fee um, requiring a $150 registration fee planning commission directed no change in that uh, we just we discussed whether or not uh, there should be a lodging tax in lieu of or in addition to the registration fee and the Commission said no uh, we talked about uh, requiring or having a penalty of $500 for failure to register uh, the Commission uh, didn't recommend it recommend any changes to that so should short-term short-term rental units comply with applicable building codes uh, the Commission said yes so there is no change to that part of the ordinance uh, the Commission also talked about that when these uh, registrations occur that there may be some type of checklist that goes along with that with like recommending smoke detectors fire extinguishers those types of things uh, also talked about should the short should the ordinance uh, provide revoking approval of short-term rentals if there are three violations related to the short-term rental and there was uh, no change in that so the only thing that the Commission did that made it more stringent was putting the 120 day requirement no more than 120 calendar days they removed the R3 from owner occupancy they removed uh, the owner having to be present and they increased the number of unrelated people to four so at this point uh, the Commission has a couple of options one uh, you can continue your discussion because I think you know what the issues are right um, two you can vote on it as is and forward it on to council um, because uh, you've done that or three as a motion on the floor is to open this up back up to a public hearing on the 27th Chairman Rogers, I have a big question to ask before we get before I vote on this. And I asked it at the last meeting, and I got an answer. And I have a short memory, but if under the conditions that we've already set, if what what we forgot to vote on last time, if that went through, and I wanted to rent it. 300 nights a year if I had a, a place I wanted to do I wanted to rent it I had a huge house and I wanted to rent to eight people at a time there in that case I can become a B&B &B, right I can go get a license and you can be go get a, a B &B. conditional use from it to be a bed and breakfast and then all I have to do is pay my lodging taxes based on who comes that that is not going to stop me from using the Airbnb app just because I am licensed in Lynchburg to be a B and B, is it? Correct. So there's always uh, there's always option for more uh, people and more rooms uh, by the conditional use permit process uh, that that would allow that in the district. Now what that does is it opens up that individual property. To a public hearing the same that this is 
mm -hmm. uh, in front of the commission and, and council because obviously I think what the discussion is is the amount of impact uh, of having uh, a large number of people coming and going from single family districts. And so, but any of them would have to have that, that conditional use permit, is that in the correct? residential district? Yes. Right. So, okay. Sorry. But, but so for, for all of those people that we have heard from, and we've heard from maybe five saying, oh, this is going to kill me, kill us, we have planned, you know, we've planned to buy five houses and do all this stuff. Well, as long as they're in R3 or, or larger, you know, that's not a problem. They can have five of them. Um, but um, they want to rent them. You know, a lot more than 180 nights a year or 120 nights a year, uh, that could be a problem. It could also be a problem for their neighbors. I think just like any business, if I wanted to run a little bakery out of my house, as long as, you know, people are not coming and going and clogging the streets, nobody's going to care. But, but you can't run any business out of your house. You can't be an accountant if you're going to, I mean, I know my husband was an accountant and ran his business out of our house and he had to get permission, you know, he had to find out, yes, this is okay because he only is going to have one client a couple of times a week, not, you know, not heavy traffic. But anytime you're going to run a business out of your house, you're going to have to get permission or get a, a, a conditional use permit. And this is the same thing. So I think anybody who wants to be so intensive about this that they're going to exceed our number of people or number of nights or whatever other conditions we've put on there, then I think they're in another category. And I think they're out of the short-term rental um, rules yeah. that we're, categories that we're setting up here. I would recommend that we go about this slowly. I've heard about a lot of cities who've, you know, let it go willy-nilly and now they're cracking down. And I think if we just do this moderately, let this happen, I agree, everybody should be able to do this. But I sure don't want all of my neighbors to do it, you know, and I have nothing but rental units all around me. We we worked hard in our neighborhood to get it back to single family. It, it's a fragile thing to have a single-family residential neighborhood and it can get out of hand very quickly. So, so I think before we go off on too far in the discussion, I, I think there, and I, I appreciate you letting me kind of go through so everybody understands where we are, I do think you should take care of the motion that's been made and seconded um, before you continue with any other discussion so we just don't blurry those lines too much more. Okay, well we can go ahead and vote on that. If someone wants to weigh in on anything pertaining to it. So if we vote for another public hearing, we could continue our workshop discussion now to sort of set some directives of what we want in place for that public hearing. That right. would be nice. Good. Yeah, I think I think the the problem with the first public hearing that we had, I recognize just a few people that were here. Yeah. There, there weren't many people here. The, I've gotten a ton of phone calls and we have 49 emails. So I think there's more interest and engagement at this point. Well, whatever, if we were to send this to city council, it's going to get sent back. Yeah. Um, yes. My initial reason for wanting to send it to city council was to get feedback from them and direction instead of us just starting over. And I think we have gotten some feedback and direction. So initially I was against going back to the beginning and starting over, but we've got a lot more ammunition, if you will, about what we need to do. So I think... So I, I think if, if you choose to send it back for another public hearing, that's fine. Um, I think what you need to do is you need to tell us if there's anything in the ordinance you want us to go ahead and change before we advertise it. But you could spend the rest of your time today identifying what those top issues are, and it sounds like the biggest one is 120 days. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you know, you're going to just be sitting here anticipating what you may hear on the 23rd, and then we'll have to rewrite it all again. Right. So, and that's what I don't want to see. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah, and 
hey, I'm here five days a week, I can do that, but I'm not sure it's the best use of your time. So, um, okay, the motion was to open up to a public hearing on the 27th. 20, is it 23? Uh, you're correct. That's why you're correct this time. Yep. So, go ahead and take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, so we'll have we will have a public hearing again on the 27th so that. Uh, we can get public comment and hopefully a lot more people like this time will show up and we'll be able to really weigh some things more seriously. So I guess we would continue conversation now about some of the things we've seen as the most important, the things that have resonated the most. So I'm, I'm curious what feedback have we gotten from council? It sounds like a few people have talked with them directly and there's been some issues with the 120 days. Yeah, the, the feedback I've gotten from council has been more that they're getting a lot of feedback, that they're getting a lot of questions, and that they know what is coming, mm -hmm. and they know that there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of issues dealing with us. And could we get it? Could we do it better? Is there things we could change? So do you want so, to just kind of go back through the list and have your discussion that way? So does everybody still agree that short-term rental should be permitted? Yes. Okay. Are we, so the 120 days thing, do you think we should leave it in there at 120 days or take it out? When we originally drafted this, staff did not have a limitation on the number of days. Yeah. Well, and ironically, I think that was an issue that I brought up at that original meeting was, is that something we needed to consider? Personally, I think the 120 days is probably too short of a time period. Uh, where, where are we as far as, you know, what will my preference be? You know, we do have to remember we are talking about what should be considered short-term rentals. You get over 180 days, is that a short-term rental? Uh, 30 days is the, is the right. max for a rental. This yeah. is for the usage. That, yeah, yeah this is for the, the usage. usage. Mm -hmm. in, in my mind, in my mind, and I've thought about this a lot, I, I haven't heard anybody say anything that turns me from this, but this is an event issue. You know, so... The, the, the longest term rental I could think about would be, uh, I think Liberty does this, is they, their online students have to come in every quarter for a week. So that would be something that this would fall to. Otherwise, you know, reunions or graduation or, you know, we, those kinds of things, in my mind, are, are events. So I think that to have, um, you know, to limit it seems to be, Counterproductive. I don't think that's a that's a it's a restriction that doesn't seem to be addressing. But well, you're you're looking at it from the perspective of the business owner, not from the neighbors. And well, but I'm sitting here. That but, to me is what the restriction is for. But but stop and think about it for a second. First of all, because of the way any of the Air, any of the online services rendered because of the rating service. First of all, that is a much more effective, all inclusive. Um, enforcement system than we could ever pay for. Number one. So, if if there's somebody's going to be a problem, either as a guest or a host or whatever, that's going to be an issue. That's going to be covered through that. To you specifically to your neighborhood issue, we already have stuff on the books that are going to address problems that might happen, with the possible exception of traffic. If somebody's, you know. Case in point, it just so happened. Um, they did this at the beach, and somebody called the day and said, oh, here we go, we put this thing in, here's what happened. There was a, a party across the street, called, you know, there was a disturbance, we addressed the disturbance, we called the police, because there is a noise ordinance in that area. Noise, disruption, um, you know, <coughs> crowds of people loitering around outside the house, you know, run through the list with the possible exception of traffic. We already have laws on the books for that. Making a, a law from a, from a short-term rental isn't going to give us a short-term rental cavalry that's going to go out and do it any faster, any more effectively. So my purpose as we go through this is really to sit down and say, let's make sure that we're defending ourselves, if you will, against things that would be additional to this particular issue. Specifically, I think the best defense on this one is to have, um, particularly in the, in the in the R1, R2 
situation have the owner there. They're going to be around. I'm not sure that that holds as much, and we can talk about this later because I know that's coming. When you get into the business uses, I'm not sure I'm as comfortable with that. But you're going to have somebody there who's keeping stuff in, in, in line, and I think that's where the that's where the where the situation lies. And if they can't do it, then there's going to be their laws in effect that are going to going to address that. So, I mean, what what's your thought about the 120 days? And again, I take it off. If, I mean, if I were writing it, I would suggest it without without any kind of a cap. The only piece that I would suggest, the only thing on that one that I'll throw out sort of not as to, to, to take that away is, and Thomas is more of a question for you and for Kent, but as we think about this, in my mind, the guiding principle is we want to make sure that, well, we've all agreed this is something we want to have, but it's something we got to manage. It's not something, you know, it's... If, if, we, if we go with 120 days and we find out six months down the line that that's just restrictive, is it easier to take the cap off? Or is it easier to take the cap, or easier in the sense of if we don't have any cap to put one on later on? I don't, I just, I, I don't think, I, I'm asking that from a procedural standpoint because I don't think it's, I'm not sure that it's going to be enforceable thing it's not, for us it's not at all whether we have a cap or no cap yeah. I don't think that's enforceable and that's what makes the decision for me mm -hmm. but I'm asking the question another way because I want to make sure I've thought it through clearly um, well again we did not recommend it to you with any time limitations um, and you know you might want to ask your zoning administrator to weigh in on it but I believe capping it at 120 days is going to be very difficult to enforce. Okay. We're, we're not going to be able to do that. Yes, sir. So I'm not sure why I put in a requirement just for the sake of putting it in when we know we're not going to be able to enforce that's it. My, that's what I landed to. As I recall when we discussed it two weeks ago, um, Richmond was going to put in a requirement for 180 days with Richmond, <coughs> excuse me, with Richmond coming off of that I'm in favor of just removing that requirement altogether. Um, I'm not going to go back to my grandstanding on the back in January about the enforceability of this. But if we can't enforce it, you know, why are we going to put additional requirements that we can we cannot enforce? It's, it's going to be up as you say, Tom. You know, you having the party, make too much noise. We call them the cops. And then that, that business will then suffer through its ratings. Yeah. So the I, unfortunate aspect is I'm concerned about is in the R1, R2 districts is the neighbors do these things. Yes, an owner has the right to run an run a Airbnb in his home, but his neighbors also have a right and expectation of privacy without having strangers coming in. And I've been torn up on that because we have two different sets of people. People who want their peace and quiet and the other people want to run Airbnb and they live side by side and where's that happy medium well, and so we're going to, have to leave it so that do they cause an issue that gets raised to Tom's office well it, w it would get raised to Mr. Henry's office but I, I think that the, the important piece of that yeah you have the rating part but the rating part's not for the neighbors but the part of the ordinance that is so important for that is the three strikes and you're out. Yeah. So if we have three documented issues related to the short-term rental, we will revoke their approval for doing so. So, um, so I think you need to look at it like that. So you need to take it piece by piece. So it sounds like, or is the commission recommending that the 120 days be removed? I'd like to make that recommendation. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sounds good. So that, okay. Is there anybody opposed to that? All right. All right. So should they be allowed in the RC through the institutional district? That's just they're permitted. We're not talking about owner occupancy and stuff like that. But should short-term rentals be allowed in these districts? Well, my issue on this situation is you did a great job explaining what the safety net was on, you know, if we're talking about a residential <coughs> use. 
if, if you have three strikes, you know, you're going to get your license revoked. I mean, that's a good example of a, my, the situation that, that, that I fear is if you get into a situation where you have a house um, or a property or a series of properties that are solely for Airbnb or solely for rental, I mean, as far as that goes, that situation to me is different from having somebody who's, who's, who's quite frankly there and, and traveling up and down. I don't, I don't understand, I can't wrap my head around what a, you know, a commercial on-site owner would, be, would look like. This doesn't have anything to do with whether they're there or live But that's there. what I'm saying, but, the, but the, I understand that, but I'm saying the permitted piece well, we it sounds like to me we're sitting down and saying we're going to have we're going to permit it to you to do it by writing a business district. Mm -hmm. And my fear is that becomes the Airbnb desert that we talked to, that we that we feared before, and I don't see a mechanism that no. that I that that would give me any any comfort that that would not happen. I think I, I understand what you're saying. I think the next few slides will help. You understand that a little bit better and I do think that, yeah there's three sides there's the like the the neighbors who live there there's the the short-term person who maybe has a room and they rent and that's part of their income and then you do have the, the more the capital side of I want to buy a bunch of houses and Airbnb them those are, those are three things so that's probably what is going to be the real sticking point I'm trying to bounce all three so for now no change in this right okay so um, the way the ordinance was originally drafted was that owner occupancy and the owner had to be present in the RC, R1, R2, and R3 districts. You directed last time that the R3 district be removed from the owner occupancy requirement. And you directed that the owner did not have to be present to be removed. So right now, the way it's drafted, if you had one of these things, an RC, R1, or R2, it would have to be your primary residence. Doesn't mean you have to be there, but it has to be your primary residence. And that's one of the concerns you've been hearing, and this is what you're talking about and debating creating these Airbnb deserts, okay? Uh, should, that, should that be a requirement? Now, to me, well, it doesn't matter what I think. It's it's a fact that you can buy a piece of property in the RC, R1, or R2 district right now and rent it all day long, right? So you don't you don't have to live there. Uh, it can just be your property and you can rent it. So I'm not sure that that's really what the issue is. I think the meat of the issue is in the next slides when you start talking about the number of people that can be there, because that's really what's starting to uh, create the impact. Okay, I hadn't considered that. So do you want to keep the owner, do you want to keep it the way it's written right now where it has to be the primary residence in the RC, R1 and R2? Okay, what about the rest of the commission? I think they should. I think in those districts they should be primary resident. Well, that's two of them. can see that's, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the, the, the heart of your, of your neighborhood. If, if the comprehensive plan's goal is to, is to maintain your neighborhood feel, that's the heart of it right there. And I think it's, you've got you've to maintain that as your primary residence. Mm -hmm. I would see it to me. I think that's what we have a more of a public hearing about, and really kind of weigh this weigh all the sides, versus just saying that's how we're going to change it. Although I do feel like we have to protect the RC, the R1, and R2, and I think that there's a big side of this that's missing. I don't. I, don't, I think the homeowners who who actually don't complain but have complaints, you know, but they're just there's like, well, I don't like it, but that's the way it is you know there is that side of it as well 
So I don't think you run into it as much in R3. And a lot of the discussions I've had with people, there's quite a few who have places in R3. And so it doesn't really matter, to, you know, to them anyway. So, so it sounds like there's really no clear consensus on the commission, but are you okay with leaving it the way it's drafted and then getting input from the public? Yes. We, should get public we were input. not unanimous on this right. Right. the it's, last time. It's there were two or three point. items that we were not unanimous on. Yes. So I, what I'm gathering that you're not going to develop it today either, but uh, you, this is one of the reasons you want to open it back up for public hearing because there's going to be people on both sides. And that, that may uh, weigh in on your opinion on the 27th. Yes. So for now, am I hearing leave it the way it is? Yes, yeah. I would say yes. Okay. Uh, so the uh, basically maintaining the appearance of a single household dwelling, uh, you remove the R3. So in the RC, R1, and R2, it would have to maintain the appearance of a single household. Are you okay with that? I don't remember yeah. removing R3 from that, but... Well, you did when you removed R3 from the other because that's the way it was written. And in an R3 district, you can have a duplex side-by-side -side right. now, so I'm not sure it makes right. sense. Right. That's what I thought, too. So are you okay with that? Yep. All right. This is the big one. So, again, right now, anywhere in the city of Lynchburg, doesn't matter if it's in a residential district, doesn't matter if it's in a business district. If you, you can have no more than three unrelated people, period. You can have a family with a hundred, but you can have no more than three unrelated. Uh, this is really what the key is. And remember my little stick figures? Mm -hmm. Okay. See them again? No. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to charge you. Uh, so what you directed us to do at the last meeting was to change that so the occupancy can, can be increased to not exceed four unrelated individuals. To me, this is the bulk of your discussion because the rest of the city that's long term is limited <coughs> to three unrelated, but if you're doing it short term, you can have four. So where do you want to leave this? So if, with the, with the long-term rentals, no more than three hundred. Right, but if I'm if I have a long-term rental, as long as I kick them out one day a month, if we approve this as is, then they can start with renting it to four unrelated individuals. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it for short-term rental, listing since it we got rid of the cap. The only, the only regulation is no more than 30 consecutive days. That's right. so you could have four college students. Once a month they leave, they come back. And that's the big deal on this because if you change it for short term, why would you not change it for long term? Right. The difference to Dave in short term and long term is, I mean, by definition, a short term rental has a bed. It has... You know, it has sheets and towels and all that but stuff. I'm, I'm just saying, if I'm a landlord, I'll right. pay the registration well, you're fee gonna, and call it a short-term rental. You're going to put in beds for your three people and and change. I mean, there is a diff There's such a big difference. Um, I'm just talking about it from a paper point of view. I mean, you guys remember when we redid yes, the zoning ordinance that this was the biggest complaint we got with dealing with unrelated individuals, well, and now we're opening up the door. I think. Somebody has to declare themselves which they're doing, short term or long term, and and if you're gonna if you're gonna say you're short term and you're gonna register with the city, you better not be lying about it and really be running it long term to people who bring their own furniture and their own sheets and towels and stuff. Cause you don't do that with an Airbnb. I mean, I don't travel with a bed. I don't know about you. You know, interestingly too, for the Airbnb people who rent six weeks, I know there's people here who do that, they can't have four by this because that falls into the long-term rental category if it's over 30 days. It would not be a short-term. Yeah, so then it become then they actually get go back to the three-person cap. Correct. That's another another thing to look at well, I, I work think, on. And, and I think if you're renting it for six weeks, you're renting it to a student who has to be at liberty for a period of time 
And you're probably not, well, I guess they could be roommates. You could rent it to, but, but generally, Airbnb is generally the traveler. And it, it's and these people who come in to, to work or, or go to school part-time, I mean, they, are, they too are getting it. But, uh, All right, for the sake of advertisement, do you want to leave it at four? I want to leave it at four. For the, for the advertisement. No, no, I just want to know how to advertise. advertise. Right, so you can take a vote then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should the number of dwelling units not exceed the underlying zoning district? That should be a fairly simple yeah, thing. Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's three. So we left it at four. We We're advertising it at four. Okay. Now, oh. If you have a public hearing, you do whatever you want to with it, but just for advertising. Yeah. All right. Parking spaces. If you're doing a short term, <coughs> should you have to have one parking space per dwelling unit? B4. Except, what about B4? Well, let's talk about all the rest of them first. Let's and talk then about all the rest of them because this says one parking place per dwelling unit. What do you do in an on street when that's when that's your only option? That's counted. On street is is counted. It is. Yes. That's why I was suggesting the places that don't have parking. I know, but I'm sitting here thinking, but practically, what does that mean? I don't know. Because if I drive, you know, in a lot of, a lot of these streets, that, you know, where there are situations like that, every, every parking place is taken. People live there. Or am I giving up a parking place and go park somewhere else when they stay? I think what happens is if, if you have a short-term rental unit in your house and you keep people keep coming and taking your neighbors places you're going to get three strikes real quick because their neighbors aren't going to put up with it okay. and you're not going to be doing it anymore well, i just want to make sure we talked about that we play that through and but just if see you how have an off street spot they can park in then you mm -hmm. won't have a problem so, so do we have to do we have to change that to make the advertisement does that have to be changed or is that for the B4? For, mm -hmm. for anything or that I know that's yeah, just tell me how you want it written. Yeah, we're not deciding to, anything yeah, I think we today. Just, I think it should be we're just trying to get this refined down so that Tom and Kent right. who have put a lot of time in this and this is I know this is not an easy issue. You just read the national press and you know that it's a it's a struggle. I want to take my hat off to you because I've said to every person that's talked to me this is probably not going to be the last iteration of this mm -hmm. in for quite some time period so we're going to be struggling with this issue for a while as we come to a better understanding for it for the community but the only thing we're doing today is just trying to get this funneled down to make certain that when we get together the next time for the public hearing we are in a position to send it forth to city council and says for better or worse this is what we think we should do and it may not be you know we try to be a pretty consensual group here but there may be <coughs> some of these issues we don't have a consensus on but for purposes of what we're doing today and i think tom's been very wise to help us get this focus down let's just get the issue out there and we can sort of chew on this for a while and, and hopefully on the 27th we should be in a position to really say all right let's have a vote on each one of these particular aspects and that's the end of it after the public comment and, and since we're going to discuss this, it needs to be in the public announcement. Absolutely, yeah. So do you want to write it where B4 is exempted? Is that the only one that has the parking yes. issue? I've been pushing for consistency with zoning, so that would make sense to me. <clears throat> okay, so are you okay with leaving it as is, but exempting B4 from the parking department? <clears throat> Okay, the registration fee. So again, the way this was came up with is these, this was done to try and make it somewhat equitable with our hotels and motels. Um, this fee was based on 30 days at $75 uh, a night at 6.5%, which came up to around $150. Uh, should the registration fee uh, be charged for short-term rentals? Yes. Leave it in there. Okay. 
Um, do you want to do a lodging tax? Uh, should failure to register a short-term <coughs> rental result in a $500 penalty? Yes, sure. Should short-term rental units compi comply with applicable building codes? Yes. Should the ordinance provide for revoking approval of a short-term rental if three violations occur? Yes. yes. All right. So it sounds like uh, we've removed 120-day requirement. Uh, the owner occupancy in the RC R1 and R2 is going to be you want to get input from the public on and we're exempting the B4 from the parking requirements. This will be advertised for a public hearing on March the 27th. Is there anything else you want to do with it? Why are we exempting the B4? I because B4 today does not have a parking requirement. Okay, so we're just keeping it as the zoning is. Okay. A, a lot of us have been doing homework on other jurisdictions, localities. It it might be useful instead of us doing it individually. If I'm not dumping it on staff, on planning staff, but I think the biggest two topics are the occupancy and the un number of unrelated individuals, especially the occupancy. What are other places doing? They're all over the place, and I thought we had sent you that uh, spreadsheet. We can send that to you. Okay. Again. And I, I guess, it, too, like when I've read about you know, all of the articles <coughs> online, I mean, it, most of the localities that are written about are, I think, unlike Lynchburg. You know what I mean? They're bigger areas. They're destinations like Barcelona. And, and so, you know, I guess I would be interested in like what Charlottesville is doing, what's Roanoke doing, like the, you know, the Lexington, the, the areas that are more like us, that are our size, that... I don't, I don't. We'll forward you the comparison. Yeah. Okay. We have a lot of information to consider at the next meeting. Is there anything else we need to add before we vote on this motion to discuss on the 27th? We did vote on it. I think we already voted. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. we voted on it and it passed. I think we were just oh, that's in right. the discussion yeah. okay. part to get so the direction to city staff. Yeah, then. So they're not pounding their head against the wall any worse than they have had to so already. We will, so. we will amend the ordinance again based on the input we received from you today, and that's the way we will advertise it for the 27th. All right. Okay. No other item on the agenda, then. I think it's advertised just in the paper. It'll be in the paper, it'll be on the website. I'm sure it'll be on Living in Lynchburg. There's been a lot of advertising lately. All right, well, is there any other business to discuss or is there only a motion? Move, we adjourn. Second. A second. Favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All opposed, no. Aye.